if you've got a problem like foundation separating, then nine times out of 10, you know, it could be because of oil production. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, which is all about educational beauty. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can stop your foundation from separating. I'm gonna show you some easy hacks and exactly why it happens and how you can stop it from happening. Now, if you do like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And don't forget, I'm over on Instagram too, so you can follow me there if you like some reels, unboxing, and everything that I get up to when I'm not filming on YouTube. Now let's head straight into the video. Now I always read your comments and something that I've seen pop up recently is why does my foundation separate after a little while or immediately or even just your nose area? So I really wanted to create a video that kind of solves this problem for you. And I'm gonna go through like various reasons as to why this may happen, but please do note that it doesn't mean that it's happening because of all of these reasons. It could just be one of them. And it's one of those things where it's kind of like, it's pretty difficult to figure out exactly which one it is, to be honest. Like it's not something where you'll know, oh yeah, that's the one. So it's something where we have to kind of like, it's trial and error, trying to figure out what it is that we need to change and maybe making those changes and seeing which one it was that eventually needed to be done. First off, I'm just gonna start giving you reasons as to why this may happen. It could be that you have excessive oil production in your skin. So if your skin gets quite oily, what happens is as it comes through, it starts to separate the foundation. It could be your skincare is being kind of like applied too heavily, like maybe you've applied too much of it. It could be that you've not waited long enough after applying your skincare to let it kind of dry into your skin and then apply your foundation. So you should always leave a five minute gap or a few minutes at least for your skincare to kind of settle into your skin and then apply your makeup. Now you've probably heard me say on various other previous videos that I always like to wait, just like wait a little bit between each layer of skincare. So I don't just slap it all on. I apply my first one, then I wait a little while, apply my second one because I want to get that, I want to let it get to work first. Now it could be that, it could be that maybe the skincare that you're using has to like maybe it has oil in there now the reason I'm saying it could be excessive oil is what happens is when that oil starts to come through and it kind of gets to where your foundation is your foundation starts to almost like crack almost starts to like separate because it depends on whether you also have an oil-based foundation or a water-based foundation so you've really got to like think about what, what what is in your foundation as well it's not just about using any foundation it's about figuring out whether it actually works well with your skin if you feel that foundations tend to like certain brands tend to oxidize on your skin or separate it could be that it's just not the right fit for your skin at the same time it could also be that if you're applying your foundation with a beauty blender that maybe you've wet it too much now as i've always said you should always use a damp beauty blender but damp means that you wet it thoroughly so that it doubles in size you then squeeze out all the water you then get a tissue wrap it around there and squeeze it again so you double squeeze it so that that, pa that paper towel basically absorbs whatever excess water was left there and you'll see it definitely will that's when your beauty blender is ready to use when you've rinsed every little bit of water out there and it's just left with this like very slight dampness to it but if your beauty blender is too wet that can also make your foundation separate you know it really depends on what what point your foundation is separating and what it is that you're doing that is making it separate so like i said now you probably understand what i mean by it could be you know it's hard to kind of figure out which one it is it could be that one of those stands out to you and you're like okay that's the one that's what i do i shouldn't be doing that but otherwise i am going to explain to you through this tutorial and show you exactly what we can do to kind of change it or just adjust our skin slightly. So I'm gonna be showing you the correct way of applying your makeup to avoid that separating in your foundation. Now, first off, we are gonna start with skincare. Now I am applying my eye cream first. I do like to apply my skincare in a particular order because I feel like I'm letting it kind of really get to work on the area it's meant to work on. So this is my eye cream and I'm using my Drunk Elephant Sea Tango Multivitamin Eye Cream just patting that in and I'm keeping it on the contour of my eye. I'm not going too low. I'm not going anywhere where it's not really meant to be. Now I know that some people may get kind of foundation separating on just the nose area. So I'm going to show you that in a particular way. So what I'm trying to do is kind of fit, fit in as much as I can so that it kind of answers any queries that you have or kind of problem problems. It kind of solves your problem. You know, whether it is just the nose or the face, I'm going to try and solve all those issues through for you through this video. Next up, I I am going to be applying my niacinamide which is my Lancer peptide drops 
literally the magic serum i'm not joking this stuff is amazing it's not really a serum it's like it's just peptide drops with vitamin e and niacinamide and this stuff is honestly it's amazing like i'm just pressing that in to my skin and over my nose now i'm just explaining to you that i'm going over my nose because i really want to show you a particular way to actually apply makeup on your nose so that you don't get that kind of separating i don't usually get my foundation separating at all what i'm showing you is what i do on clients that you know when i know that that's what the case is that that's what happens with them so if you feel that like your foundation is separating on your nose only then i'm going to show you a particular like something you can do to avoid that now i'm basically waiting just a little bit for that to kind of really settle into my skin now obviously some sometimes you may not have enough time which i fully understand i'm not saying you have to do this every time but whenever you can please do try and do it because it really makes a difference in the result of your makeup but anyway we're moving on to the next bit which is my moisturizer now i'm using my wind marrakesh rich moisturizer and I am gonna be putting a little bit of this on my hand now obviously you use the skincare that you feel is suited to your skin this works well for my skin so I'm just pressing this in now quick note I'm not going to be applying it to my nose if your foundation separates only on the nose area I'm not going to be applying it there so I want you to just follow this nose routine if that's what your issue is right so I'm only applying this to my face so if I was the kind of person where my skin basically you know my foundation starts to separate only on my nose then this is what I would do I wouldn't apply my moisturizer on my nose I've just gone in with my niacinamide that also has hydration in there anyway so it's not like you're totally totally kind of like drying out your nose area now Obviously, you want to wait for that to kind of settle down as well. By the way, meanwhile, have you gone over to my other channel, which is my vlog channel? Make sure you do subscribe to it because I would really love to see you over there. It's a bit more about like what goes on behind the scenes and like, you know, just you get to see my studio and stuff and like go to events with me, which are all kind of like beauty events. It's like a lot of lifestyle and just real talk, to be honest, you know, like just really discussing, you know, the good days and the bad days and how you can make yourself feel better. It's a bit of, bit of uplifting, motivational life for you. Next up, we're gonna go in with our primer. Now I'm gonna go in with my Milk Hydro Grip. I feel like this is a amazing, it's an amazing primer for this kind of problem, like your foundation separating. I just feel like this just creates that really nice tacky film over your skin and it acts like this barrier between your foundation and your skin. So it lets your skincare get to work and it also keeps your foundation where it's meant to be and it creates a nice smooth layer for it. So what I'm doing is I'm smoothing this over the skin now, if your nose, if you feel that, okay, it's severely separating, I would try it with the primer, right? I would try it with it, but I would also try it without it just to see what works better for you. So, you know, it's not like you have to get it right just on the first day. I'm not going to apply it on my nose because I really want to kind of show you how I would do it on someone that just has that nose issue, you know? Whereas with the rest of the face, I feel like this is what I would do even if this foundation is separating on that area. But some people just have excessive kind of, it's way more excessive on the nose area. So that's why I'm not applying it there, but I am applying it on other areas. Now, very quickly, I'm just gonna apply my concealer to my eyelids because that's not really something that, you know, you know it's not really somewhere where I think that you would get excessive oil. That's a whole different issue. So I'm just gonna apply my concealer and very quickly do that. Right, I've done my eyelids. I'm now gonna do my under eyes. So I'm just gonna apply my concealer. I use the technique under painting, so that's why I'm applying my concealer first. So I'm just gonna go through with you like exactly where I'm applying it and then, you know, explain to you why. Now what I'm doing is buffing this concealer into my skin I'm not going to go over my nose. I'm going to explain why, because that's like a certain technique. I'm going to show you if it's just your nose. That's kind of like separating. Now, I'm really buffing this into the skin. So that gives me that coverage, but at the same time, it's not like too thick where it's like just sitting there and, then, and it's, it's just prime for separation, if you see what I mean. I've got my damp beauty blender and now I'm going to start blending this in. I'm just buffing in my under eye area. So I'm keeping it on the under eye area. Now I've got that really nice coverage on my under eyes and like I've got the concealer wherever I want it. So now what I want to do is just quickly sculpt my face. Now this is really down to preference. So I'm not going to really go through this with you because this is really based on whether you do this and, you know, you do it, you can do it. 
if you if you do it you can do it that's what i was meant to say if you if you do it you can do it if you don't then you can skip this part Now with the nose, I want to contour my nose. So I'm gonna actually do the nose area for you now. Now, the first thing we did was apply our Lancer Peptide Drop. So that's our niacinamide. We applied that to our nose. We didn't apply any moisturizer. We didn't apply any primer because I'm going on the on the basis that I've got a very oily nose, right? And my foundation separates. So this is what you would kind of do. Next, what I'm gonna do is apply just a little bit of powder to my nose. It's the smallest amount, and I'm actually using a very fine powder. I'm using my Hourglass Veil Powder. Powder, and I'm using my Real Technique setting brush. It's the smallest amount, not a lot. And all I'm going to do is just kind of like dust over my nose. That's it. That's all we're doing. And now we're going to contour the nose. So if you don't contour your nose, you can go straight in with your foundation when you do it on the rest of the face. But this is just what I like doing. So I'm just going to kind of like go over here. I personally, I'm going to be honest, I don't like applying cream on top of powder because I just don't think it's meant to go but with this kind of the, the technique that I'm showing you it's when you have excessively oily skin so you just you've just got to be careful with how you're applying your products and honestly you have to apply the smallest amount if I set my face with powder and it like baked it I can't go over with cream or liquid or anything it's going to completely ruin but I've put the honestly the smallest amount of powder on my nose so it's very very minor now what I'm doing is I'm just going to kind of buff in this contour so the same way Way I usually do it now it's going to feel a little drier to me because obviously I don't have an excessively oily nose but when you do have an excessively oily nose you'll find that this actually moves around much better for you I would really not recommend this if you have uh, oil, like dry skin basically so now we've done that we're going to carry on with the rest of the face and now this is where we're going to apply our foundation I'm going to use my Dior forever glow today I just feel like a bit of a glow so I'm just shaking my foundation bottle I'm using my shade but by the way which is is, what shade am I? Oh, 3WO. Just gonna put that on the back of my hand, getting my damp beauty blender. And remember how I said you've gotta make sure it's damp in the right way. And now I'm gonna basically go in and apply my foundation. So let me just apply this everywhere. To be honest, like I'm not gonna just skip this application bit and just like fast forward it because I really want you to like understand that a lot of it has to do with your application too. So you can see how I'm really kind of like buffing it into the skin. So I'm going on the back of my hand grabbing a little bit more product and I'm going to go on to the under eye area and I'm just kind of like taking it underneath there now I like to do this in a particular like order I like to start from the forehead and then I work my way down I kind of do it section by section and symmetrically like symmetrically <laughs> is that even a word yeah I just don't think I'm saying it right I do it in a symmetric do you ever have that thing where you say words and you're like it's normal but then you're like is that like, am I saying it right? Like, you just have a really not very intelligent moment. All right, okay, I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna go onto the nose now, right? So this is where I'm gonna go over as normal. We applied no moisturizer. We only applied our niacinamide and we also applied the smallest, smallest amount of powder. So I'm just going along the jawline. I like to do the jawline before I do my kind of like cheekbones because I've got contour there. And I'm just kind of like dragging it on the jawline because obviously I want to make sure there's no kind of like harsh lines there. But then everywhere else, I'm kind of like buffing it in nicely, you know, I'm really pushing it into the skin. And this way I feel like, honestly, the difference is amazing. Like when you apply foundation in the right way, it compared to like just, you know, like doing it in the wrong way, which is basically maybe not buffing it in enough or maybe not using the right tools. Okay, now I feel like my foundation is fine. I'm happy with how that looks and I kind of just wanna set it now, really. Now, this also can make a big difference in whether your foundation separates or not, is the way that you kind of set it. Now, what I'm doing is I've got my powder in the palm of my hand. I'm using my Ben Eye Luxury Powder in Banana and I've got my Beauty Blender and I've also got my Powder Puff here. <laughs> you know, This is the only thing I'm good at multitasking with makeup. That's it. Cannot multitask with anything else but I'm using the tip of my sponge and I'm just going to basically grab hold of any excess product that's kind of like underneath my eyes and it kind of like gathers up in my fine lines there grabbing hold of that then I'm going to press my powder puff together and then I'm going to basically press my powder that's the first place that I powder because it's the first place that ends up like creasing on me. Now what I'm gonna do is press it in 
everywhere else. This makes a huge difference on whether your foundation will separate later on. Pressing the powder in can really be a game changer. Now, if you're worried about it all looking cakey, you, to be honest, shouldn't be because if you've got a problem, and I'm pressing up my nose by the way as well, if you've got a problem like foundation separating, then nine times out of 10, you know, it could be because of oil production. If, if you've got an issue with like oil production, then I don't think you're really gonna have a problem with your skin looking too dry, if that makes sense. Now I'm gonna go into my under eye area and I'm just gonna basically dust away this powder here first. And then I'm going in with my hourglass veil brush. I'm just dusting away the powder everywhere else. Bear in mind, you can go much lighter with your powder, like how much you put on. This is what works for me. I'm just gonna do little bits, like kind of bronze my face up a little bit, you know, just to give it a bit more dimension, a bit of warmth, uh, add some blush as well. First off, I'm gonna get my nose finished. Now I've already contoured it, but I do like to always go in after with the smallest amount, just to make it that little bit more sharper, you know? But at the same time, because I've done it underneath the contouring and I'm going over with the tiniest bit, it's it's not going to look powdery it's not going to look like oh my god this you know like when you see the lines i don't really want that so this is a, a really good way to do it so i've got my 200 brush from fenty i've got my shady biz bronzer and i'm using the tip of the brush and all i do it all i doing <laughs> what i'm going to do is just repeat the kind of contour that i did a little v like diamond and then on the sides of the bridge of the nose i'm just trying to show you that you can still you know like carry on as normal on your nose even after like the technique that we've used with the powder underneath but you should honestly find that this works really really well when you have a nose that kind of separates a lot just going to go in with a little bit of highlight using my tom ford and what brush is this, this is my 234 i like to do a little tiny line there and then just wipe off the excess and then on the bridge of my nose okay now my island ting bronzer and my hourglass brush and uh, i'm just gonna basically bronze my face a little bit you know so it's just a bit warm on the perimeter isn't it amazing what bronzer can do and just applying it in the right way in the right places now I'm gonna apply some blush. I'm using this palette, which I recently got, and I absolutely love it. So I really wanna share it with you. It's the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked Tiger Palette. It's so nice. The colors are just, just really pretty. First off, I'm gonna go into the blush. I'm gonna use that kind of nice, it doesn't really tell you what the colors are. Oh, it's just numbered. Okay, I'm gonna go into, shall I go into like three or five? I'm gonna go into five. This is my F37 brush, by the way. It's got a slight sheen to it. It's really nice. I like this because it's kind of like a blush and highlight in one. You know, I don't need to go over with highlight because it gives me that sheen with the color. So that's really my base done. And let me just very quickly do my brows and my lips and I'll be back in a sec. So I've done my brows and my lips and now you can kind of like have a better idea of how it all looks. Now I haven't done anything else to my base so it is still the same as when I left you. I really hope that this has kind of shown you the different kind of way of application and it, they're tiny, tiny little changes that you can make that could actually completely change how your foundation looks in the long term, like over the, like for several hours. I'm hoping you try this. Now there is one last thing that I wanna show you because this can also help. It's just that added little touch that could potentially help it last longer and also help it like not separate, which is your setting spray. So I'm gonna use this one. This is actually a kind of new one from MAC. This is the alcohol-free long-lasting setting spray. So it's fix and stay over. So it's like more of a just long-lasting spray. So I'm just gonna shake this up a bit. Now there are two ways that you can apply this. So what I'm gonna do is actually show you the second way. I don't wanna actually spray this. You can spray it all over the face if that's what you prefer, but you also can spray it on your beauty blender and then press your beauty blender. So I'm just like basically spraying it like that. And then what I'm gonna do is just press this in to my skin. And if it's just a certain area that you feel like you need it, then only apply it in that area. And I've sprayed the whole sponge so I can kind of like move it around to get all that product, you know, press it on. 
This little step right at the end could also kind of like help you to avoid that separation in your foundation. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm also not saying that this is the only thing that you need to do. I do think that all those steps that I showed you or the fact that, you know, we spoke about how much skincare you put on, how long you wait after each layer, whether you've applied the right type of foundation. They're all different things to look at, but what I would suggest is before you look at, okay, do I have the right foundation? Try all those other steps first because that doesn't require you to go out and buy anything different. So try those first. And then your last resort is to find a foundation which is not the kind of base that you currently have. So see what your foundation base is currently and, and then get something that works better with your skin. By changing all those, like doing all these little changes, like waiting after each layer, also, you know, using the setting spray at the end or, you know, pressing it in, using your sponge, making sure it's the right type of dampness. All these little things should help you to have a foundation that looks flawless that doesn't separate I really do hope that kind of nose area really helped those of you who you know have that problem of it separating only on the not nose I hope that's helped you too if you are wondering as to okay why wouldn't you do that all over your face it's I'm trying to show you the difference there's only so much I can do on my skin but I'm showing it trying to show you that if you have only a nose area and it's excessively oily there then that's what you do but the rest of your face usually my clients what happens is they separate on the nose and everywhere else it's completely fine so that's why I kind of like separated that area and did a different routine there but I really do hope that this has helped you in some way and you know wherever you are in the world I'm wishing you loads of positive vibes and I hope you have a really good day I hope you've enjoyed this video today and I hope that it's helped you with your own issues about foundation separating and I hope it's kind of cleared it all up for you now if you do like this video please do give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you don't miss any of my future videos until the next video take care and I'll see you soon